Mathematics is based on abstraction. So what are the abstract features of a natural language? A natural language can be written using a finite set of symbols, like an alphabet or a set of ideograms. These symbols are then put together according to specific rules about spelling, grammar, and syntax. You can think of a language as a collection of sentences that are spelled correctly and obey the rules of grammar and syntax. So these sentences are not part of the English language because they break rules of spelling or are grammatically or syntactically incorrect. But as long as the sentence is spelled correctly and is grammatically and syntactically correct, then it is part of the language. So these sentences are even though they are false or make no sense. And in particular, we're not concerned about the meaning of a sentence, only that it is a valid sentence. So let sigma be some set of symbols. A string consists of an ordered sequence of elements of sigma, with the length of the string being the number of terms. You can think about sigma as being our alphabet. For example, if sigma is just the two letters a and b, then any sequence of a's and b's is a string. So some strings are a, a, b, or a, b, b, a, a, or a, 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 a. Now, while we typically write sequences with the terms separated by commas, we typically drop the commas and the spaces and mash everything together, and we say that we use juxtaposition to write the strings. Our symbols are just placed one after the other. We'll use the notation bar x to indicate the length of the string. So if our alphabet consists of the letters a and b, then our string aab has three symbols, so it has length three. Meanwhile, aabbaa has length six, and aaaa has length four. We'll find it useful to define the empty string lambda. This is the string that contains no symbols, so the length of lambda is zero. Note that this is different from the empty set. This is actually considered to be a string. It just doesn't have any symbols. If our alphabet is sigma, we'll use the following conventions. Sigma star is the set of all possible strings. Sigma k is the set of all possible length k strings. And sigma plus is the set of all possible strings of positive length. And in particular, we exclude the empty string lambda. Now, in general, while every possible string is part of sigma star, most strings are meaningless. And so we define a formal language as a subset of sigma star. Going back to our natural languages, remember that we can put the letters in any order we want to. But in order to be an English sentence, the letters have to follow certain rules about spelling, grammar, and syntax. Now, how we choose those rules is up to us. For example, let sigma be a and b. Let's try to create a formal language over sigma. So again, the set sigma star is a set of all possible sequences using a and b, as well as the empty sequence. So some elements of sigma star are And since this list is a subset of sigma star, this list is a formal language. Now, since formal language is a subset of sigma star, then all ordinary set operations apply. And since the set operations produce another subset, they produce another formal language. So if I have two formal languages over a set of symbols, then the complement is a formal language, the union is a formal language, the intersection is a formal language, the set difference is a formal language, and so on. In addition, because the elements of a formal language are strings, we can introduce a new operation. The concatenation of two strings x and y is the string xy, where the symbols of x are followed by the symbols of y. 
And if x and y are both in sigma star, then xy is also in sigma star. So concatenation is another way to form a formal language. And so we define it as follows. Let L1 and L2 be formal languages over sigma. The concatenation consists of all strings where the first part comes from L1 and the second part comes from L2. If L is a formal language, we also use the notation LK, which is the concatenation of LK times, and use L star to indicate all possible sequences of elements of L. Again, letting lambda be the empty sequence, L plus will be the set of all possible sequences of one or more terms from L. For example, our first language might consist of the strings L-O-O-K, E-A-T, S-U-I-T, and our second language might consist of the strings U-P, D-O-W-N, and the empty string. Let's find L1, L2, and L1 to the third. So L1, L2 consists of every concatenation that begins with an element of L1 and continues with an element of L2. So we might put that together in tabular form. We'll put our elements of L1 across the top and our elements of L2 as our row labels, and we'll have something from L1 followed by something from L2. And note that since L2 has the empty string, then concatenating one string with the empty string just gives you the original string. And we can find the remaining elements. So L1, L2 would consist of all nine elements. Meanwhile, L2 cubed is a concatenation of three elements of L2. So if we take all three to be the empty string, we just get the empty string. Two empty strings followed by an up is up. Two empty strings followed by a down is down, as are combinations like empty, down, empty, and so on. And we can get the other possibilities. Because a language consists of a subset of strings, it might not be obvious why we need concatenation. So to understand the significance of concatenation, suppose L consists of all grammatically correct English sentences. Then, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, is part of English language, but war and peace would not be, nor would any novel written in English. In other words, concatenation allows us to form symbols into words, but not all strings of symbols are words. We can then form words into sentences, but again, not all strings of words are sentences, and then we can form sentences into novels, and for better or worse, all novels are part of the language. In other words, concatenation allows us to go from grammatically correct sentences to trilogies with five books.